Welcome to Pray Lakes Church. Uh, I'm Cody, the digital pastor here. Uh, and right off the bat, we need you to hear this, uh, that we are a no matter church. And what that means is no matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, or even what's been done to you, uh, that God loves you. <laughs> he does. And you can look from here with us. You don't have to have it all figured out. Uh, you don't even have to believe everything that we believe here to start. We are just really glad that you're here. And if you are new, or newer, or maybe you've been around here for a while and you just haven't taken that step in getting connected, I would love to help you take that step. And if you do, uh, just as a thank you, I'll send you an Amazon gift card here 
today. And what you can expect is I'm not going to spam you with texts or emails. I'll just reach out this week and see how I can be praying for you. So to fill out that form, it's just a short form. Uh, you go to praylakes.org forward slash welcome, or you can click the link in the chat right now. And uh, one of the faith milestones uh, that we celebrate here at Prairie Lakes is baptism. And baptism is a couple of things. If we look at scripture, uh, it is an act of obedience. Uh, it is um, just obeying what Jesus commanded. He tells us in the Great Commission to uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, we are told to repent and to be baptized. So. Uh, it is an act of obedience, but it's also uh, just a public display of your inward salvation. So it is for believers and it is a celebration. It puts on display the inward work uh, that God has done in you. So it is truly a highlight of the life of a believer. So we would love to help you take that step um, if you've stepped over the faith line and haven't been baptized. So whether that was um, a recent decision you made or it happened a long time ago, we would love to help you join in on this celebration. So if you wanna learn more about baptism, how uh, we could even do it, no matter where you are at geographically, um, you can learn more or sign up at praylakes.org forward slash baptism. One of the next steps that we take here is giving generously. And when you give to Prairie Lakes Church, uh, you do a couple of things. Uh, you partner with us in changing lives here in the state and beyond. Uh, you partner with us on our mission to cover Iowa with no matter churches. And um, you give God room to work. When you remove finances, uh, money uh, from the throne of your heart, uh, you put God back in his proper place uh, when you give generously. So if you want to take that step, whether it's for the very first time or increasing in your generosity, you can do that at praylakes.org forward slash give. And hey, we are going to kick to today's message. We're going to hear from Pastor John, uh, just setting up our new Worth Risk series. So let's kick to Pastor John. Welcome to Prairie Lakes Church. We are uh, so glad that we can do this together and remember that we are one church on many corners and it's such a beautiful thing to be a part of this thing called Prairie Lakes. I, uh, last weekend I was in Grinnell. Hey Grinnell, it was great to see you. So no matter where your seat is this weekend or if you find yourself on the online campus, we're so glad you're here. And hey, if you're online, Make sure you log in and, and sign in and say hi to Pastor Cody and his team because here's what we know. We want you to be known and connected people and being known are growing people. So we really want to connect with you. So if you're online only, make sure that you sign in and, and do that. All right, we're doing the new series. We're gonna take five weeks. And it's a series that, that uh, we're really basing, we're basing small groups around. And let me just say this right now. If you haven't gotten the group for this series, you can still do it. Just go to your campus pastor or somebody on your team there and just say, I wanna get in a group. I know it's late, but I wanna get in a group. I, I think it'll really be worth it for you. Uh, really worth it. We want you to be connected relationally. That's one of those next steps that we lay on the foundation uh, of Jesus. So, so we're in this series called Worth the Risk, okay? And, and I want you to, to, to know this, that you can go to the website, and when you go to the website, go to the Sermon Study Guide. And here's a, a picture of it right here. Um, but in the Sermon Study Guide, man, it's, it's there every week for every message that we give. And this one is, is, is really designed for not only individual use, but this is the group study guide too. So we really want you to take advantage of that. And I'm excited about doing the adventure and using the QR code on there. It's something kind of unique uh, for this series. So, so jump and do that. All right. So when we talk about worth the risk, here's, here's, here's where we're going with the series um, um, is this. Um, if you're a follower of Jesus, I, listen, I know not everybody's a follower of Jesus here, but I, 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 I know that but if you're a follower of Jesus, and what we mean by that is if you've made the step over the faith line and you're trusting Jesus, you said you're my only hope, you confess that you're a sinner and you're, you believe that he's the king and the, the Messiah, and, you, and you, you make that step over the faith line, you become his follower. And, and now there's, there's phases and stages to being a follower, right? Just like in any kind of relationship, but it, and, and it moves and, and there's some ups and downs in it. Um, but, but what we know is that um, sometimes after you're a follower of Jesus for a while, some weird stuff can set in. 
um, a, a spiritual apathy can, can set in. And, and whether it's on circumstances or, or culture or something going on in your own life or sin, but, but we, we just know it can, or, or a, a, a lethargy kind of in, in, in your faith. Um, another thing that can set in is there's this kind of need and this desire to kind of hunker in and, 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 and increase desire for, for my own comfort and, and, and my own safety. And, and, and listen, um, we're all going to have those, those, those kind of parts to our following, uh, following of Jesus. But, but sometimes, sometimes, when those feelings and those phases set in, and they stay for too long, you sit in a spot that is really the opposite of, of what Jesus is, is calling you to be in and, and, and to do. See, everything in our society right now, you know, coming out of this pandemic and all the political stuff, and all the cultural stuff, right? There's this, there's this kind of call, this siren scream for, for us to hunker back and, and, and this desire for, for kind of getting safe and, 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 and my own security starts to, starts to really creep to the top of my list of, of what's most important. But what if that's the actual thing? that's putting some of us into this camp of spiritual apathy and some of us into this camp of, of, of spiritual lethargy or some of us in this camp of kind of having this walk through sleepwalking faith that isn't going anywhere. What if Jesus is actually calling us to be something completely different from that? For the next five weeks, we're going to dig into the parables of Jesus. And I think what you're going to find is this. Very surprising about what Jesus is actually looking for in his followers. So let's dig in. So I want us all to do this together, okay? Whether you have your phone or a paper Bible, if you have an app on your phone, use it. But I want all of us to turn to this one because we're not going to put it on the screen. Matthew 25, okay? Matthew 25. Now, Matthew's a fairly easy book to find. It's the first book of the New Testament, so thumb through it. Um, no, no shame. They don't have all the books memorized, but this is a, your, your, your chance to learn and go and, and, and do that. So bring it to Matthew 25. Now, in Matthew 25, we're going to sit in actually verses 14 to 30. This, this parable, this story of Jesus. But, but it's really important that we, we put all of this, this in context, this story in, in context. Now, this is the parable of the, bag of gold, the bags of gold or the parable of the talents. and kind of depends on what version that you have. But, but this is a story, but it's set very specifically uh, in, in a context, okay? So if you're in Matthew 25 right now, I want you to just flip back to the beginning of 24. And, and here's what we see um, in, in 24. Well, in, in 21, it's, it's G, back to chapter 21, Jesus is, is you know, coming into Jerusalem, right? And he's, he's getting ready to get there. And, and in 24, Jesus is telling these stories and he's talking to his disciples, and he's talking to the people. And, 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 it's, and it's very focused on, on the end times. It's very focused on, on, on what to expect at the end. It's very expo focused on this, this kind of theme of, 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 of waiting and, 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 and what's next. See, if you're a follower of Jesus, We've got this really strange dynamic that we live in, okay? Because here's what we know. Though we live on this earth, it's, it's not our home, right? This is a temporary residence. Our, our real home is in heaven. And, and though what happens here is, is, is crucially important, it's all based on, on him. So we kind of live on this idea that, yes, I'm here and I'm not a citizen. I'm a citizen of heaven, but, but you know, I've got a role to play and I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, a, a mission to accomplish. And, and it matters a lot. So we live with this kind of one eye on earth and, and, and one eye kind of on heaven. Like, what, what's next? And we, we, we live in this, not a tension, but we live in this balance of going, someday he's going to come back. Back, but today, this is where I'm at. Uh, someday he's going to return, but today I'm on mission for him, preparing for that return. And so we live in that, 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 that kind of um, a, a paradox of, of already, but not yet. And, and, and so there's this, there's this watching and this, this waiting for it. So in chapter 24 of Matthew, he's, he's, he's Jesus himself is saying, hey, it, it's, he's talking about the end times. And then he gets down to, to he gets to verse 30 and he says, then, then will appear the Son of Man in heaven and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds. Right, so he's, he's given this idea, this future picture, this someday. Then he gets to 38 and he says, hey, but about that day and hour, <laughs> uh, nobody knows, okay, nobody knows. And then in verse 43, and then in chapter 25, he walks into these stories about what it means to live in this kind of in-between, this waiting. 
while we're here, while we're waiting, what does Jesus expect of his followers? And if you flip ahead just a page, what you're going to see is this. In chapter 26, chapter 26 is, is the Last Supper. He gets anointed. Judas betrays him. Uh, he predicts his denials. He's in Gethsemane. He gets arrested. So this is literally on the cusp of that, of that, of that final days of his life. And on the final days of his life, Jesus tells these stories. These stories. And let's look at the best example of them, I think, in Matthew 25. Let's look at verse 14. So here's what Jesus says. He says again, he says, he says again, okay, so, so what will the kingdom be like? What's, what's it going to be like? He says again, it'll be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another, two bags, and to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Okay, so let me just, let me just stop there before we go any further in the story. Let me just kind of point things out as we go. All right, so, so the, this picture is, and this is a picture of, of Jesus kind of talking about himself. He's that man going on the journey. What journey is he going on? He, he knows, right? He knows that in just a week or so, he's going to be arrested and crucified, and then he's going to be buried, and he's going to rise again, and then he's going to ascend to heaven after a while, right? So he knows there's going to be this period where he's going to go on a journey. And while he's gone, what's he doing? He's entrusting his mission, he's entrusting what's his to his people, to his servants. He's entrusting them. And notice what he says, to one he gave this much, to one he gave this much, and to one he gave this much, okay? And then he, and he qualifies it with this. He says, each according to his ability. So let's just, let's just, just for a minute, th sit on that for a minute. What he decides to give each of us as opportunities or responsibilities or gifts, what he decides, it's his decision. And he knows us better than we know ourselves. And there's too many of us that spend our time thinking, man, I wish I was that, or I wish I was that, or I wish I had that, or I wish I, wish I had that gift, or I wish I could do that, or I wish I was more like her, or I wish I was more like them, or I wish I was more like him. Listen, stop that, okay? If you're a follower of Jesus, you stepped over the faith line, here's the deal. He has entrusted you with something valuable to him. Whether it's five or two or one is irrelevant. What's relevant is this that the king of the universe entrusted you with something very precious to him. And he gave it to you specifically. He gave you these opportunities. He gave you this responsibility and me very specifically, okay? According to who we are and how he's wired us. All right, so let's go back to the text now. Then he went on his journey. Verse 16. The man who had received the five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gave five bag, gained five bags more. So also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Okay, so, so these three servants all had equal opportunity, and each of them took, took their own unique approach to it. So the first two guys, here's what they did. They took what they had, and they invested it, okay? They, they, they invested it. They had this opportunity, they had this, and they said, I'm gonna invest this for my king. The third one said, hey, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna lose it. I don't wanna screw this up. So the third one dug a hole and, 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 and hit it, which, which wasn't uncommon, right? It was not uncommon in those days. So, so the approach of each of these three, while they're waiting for Jesus, while they're in this kind of <laughs> in-between time, right? The approach of these three, Jesus talks very specifically, and we get a clue into what Jesus is looking for in his followers. Okay, so look at the next verse. 19, it says this. So after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them, right? So on the very surface level, the, the master comes back from his long journey and this very surface, but on this spiritual level, this parable level, of which Jesus is talking about himself, after a while, he comes back and he settles his accounts with what he gave to his people. And the man who had received, it says in verse 20, the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. 
And his master replied, and I want you to hear this. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man with the two bags of gold also came. And master, he said, you, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. And, and see, I have gained two more. And in verse 23, look what the master says, word for word again, right? Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Okay, so, so, so just catch this. Five, on a return of five, and two, and a return of two, are both 100% return. What they started with is irrelevant, but what they did with it is the issue. That's what's relevant. And so the master comes back and he says, you, you did great. You, you took a risk for the kingdom. You, you did what I expected you to do. You, you took a risk. Well done. And now let's go to the, the next, just keep going the story and go to the next one. And in verse 24, the man who had received one bag of gold came. And master, he said, I knew that you're a hard man, harvesting where you've not sown and gathering where you've not scattered seed. So I was afraid. And I went on and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. And his master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So just, just time out, question mark here, because you, you think, is, was that what Jesus was like? No, that's not what Jesus was like. Jesus says, this is the, my, my question for you is, you, know, you, you think I'm that way? This is the way that you think I am? And so since you think I'm this way, you, you took what I gave you and you hid it in the ground because you were afraid, because you didn't bother to know who I am or what I'm like, and, and that's what you did with it? You see, this is, this is the, the, the kingdom principle, right? This is it. If we're going to have influence, we have to take what God has given us and we've got to do something with it and to live a life of fear and, and, and hunkering down and, and believing things about Jesus that aren't who Jesus really is. We're going to end up where this guy ends up. Now, just, just listen to what he says now, okay, and, and, and follow this. So his master replied, go back to that. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. And in verse 27, he says, well, then, if kind of that's what you thought, right? You should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with, with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Whoever has will be given more and they will be given in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, all right? So just, just let's put our minds around this just for a minute. And let's just think about this just for a minute. In this thing called the kingdom, in this, this, this place that we live right now where it's someday he's going to come back, but today we're here and, and while he's away and while we're awaiting his return, he's entrusted us with opportunities and with influence. And the real issue is, right, the real issue the real issue is, did you take the risk with the kingdom opportunity that you were given? You see, here's this Jesus who knows us better than we know ourselves, and this Jesus, <laughs> here's what he likes. <laughs> he likes to entrust us according to however he wants to. And what he's looking for is did you take the risks on the opportunity, the kingdom opportunity, that you were given? Now from this one parable, and <laughs> when you start reading them, you're going to see this all the way through. What is Jesus looking for? What's he looking for? Here's what he's looking for. People who will simply ask the question, is it worth the risk? 
and they're going to be willing to take the risk and the kingdom opportunities that are presented to them. We have a kingdom currency, right? We do. But do you want to know if it's worth the risk? Do you want to know why sometimes we, we fall into spiritual apathy and we, we fall into lethargy and we kind of fall into this, this spot of kind of treading water or just spinning our wheels with Jesus or, we, or we, we get in the spot and we want to look for what's the next thing I should do or go to or, or, or what's the next thing I could, I could and, and, and we ask the question, what's really God, what's God really want from me? And I don't know what he wants from me. And we get in these spots and we sit still. And the reason that we get there is this. Because we forget this is what Jesus is like. He's gone. He's coming back. And while he's gone, he said to you and me, I'm entrusting you. I'm entrusting you. Are you willing to take the risk? And here's what we learn. When it comes to the risk, Jesus expects it. He expects us to take the, take the risk and to the, step into the, the kingdom opportunity to, 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 to grow his kingdom and to bring his influence to, to people and to, 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 to our property and, 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 and to our platform, right? He, he, he expects us to, to step into it. He, he, he expects it. When God puts a kingdom opportunity in front of each of us, there's always risk, okay? There's always going to be risk. But here's the expectation of Jesus, that you will step in to the risk for the kingdom. That whatever opportunity he puts in front of you, you will step into it. He expects us to. And not only that, but he rewards it. Go, go back to this text and, and, and look what he says to those two. One had five and one had two, right? And, and, and here's what he says, well done. This is Jesus. What's he rewarding? What's he saying? Yes, this is what I want you to do. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. <laughs> Is it worth the risk when a kingdom opportunity comes? Jesus actually expects it. Jesus actually rewards it. He says, listen, if you'll be faithful in this, this one little step towards your neighbor, I'll, I'll give you more influence. If you'll be faithful in your one little step with your property and your stuff, I'll give you more influence. If you'll be faithful in this one little step into, into using your platform for me, I'll give you more. And every time he expects it, every time he rewards it, and look what it says at the end of both of these, come and share your master's happiness. This actually makes Jesus happy. When you and me, who are the followers of Jesus, get out of the treading water phase or just being kind of, kind of floating in the stream and we step into every risky adventure, whether it's with the people in our little Iowa, right? Or whether it's with the property, the stuff that God's given us, or whether it's the platform that, that we have in our, in, our, in, our, in our place of work and in our families. He expects this. And this is worth the risk. And my friends, it's not just this, this, this one little parable, right? It's not one. This, this theme, right? This, is it worth the risk of stepping into the adventure? Is it, is it worth it? Um, it, it the, the answer is yes. This is consistent with Jesus. This is consistent with, with what he says. I'm going to show you just one spot. We can go bang, bang, bang. Three in a row where the same principles ring true. Now, we're going to leave Matthew now. I want you to go to the book of Luke, okay? So go to Luke chapter 10. So it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Go to Luke chapter 10. Luke 10. Now in, in Luke 10, uh, there's, there's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bang, 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 but it's the, the principles remain the same. So we're not going to be able to kind of just dig through all of these um, um, kind of detail-wise. But just write these down so, you, so this could be part of your study this week. So you go to the sermon study guide, you walk through that, you walk through the Matthew 25. Then other parts during the week or in your small group, you pull up Luke 25, which is the good, Luke 10, 25, which is the, the good Samaritan. Some of us are familiar with that story. And then right after that, in verse 38, is the story of Mary and Martha. Okay, that's not a parable, but, but it's the, the illustration of what Jesus rewards. Okay. And then, and then right after that, in, in Luke uh, uh, chapter, verse 1 here of chapter 11, he gives kind of the shortened version of, of how to pray, and then he gets into the late night need. 
Okay, so, so these are the three. And I want you to look at them with me because I want you to see these, these, these principles ring true, okay? So, so you get to Luke 10, and, and it starts with the big story of he sends out the 72, and, and they, again, they risk it, they go out, they risk it, and they get rewarded. But you get to the parable of the Good Samaritan, and, and, and he, he, let me start it, then I'll, I'll, I'll shorten it up for you. So in verse 25 of Luke 10, it says, On one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. And teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Is what's written in the law, right? So, so, so he, the, the guy's trying to test him and love the Lord your God with all your heart. And then Jesus tells a story. And he says, well, what's that look like? What's it mean to love my neighbor? What's that, what's that mean? Then you get down to verse 30, and he tells the story. A man was going down from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho. And when he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, they beat him, and they went away, leaving him half dead, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a trail between these two cities, Jerusalem and, Jer and Jericho, and this guy gets robbed, and they take his clothes, they take his money, they beat him up, and they, they throw him in the ditch. In verse 31, it says, A priest happened to be, be going down the, the same road, and, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side, because, you know, Jesus is, again, remember what he's saying here, there's the, what's the risk? Here's the opportunity. Here's the opportunity. And, and, and so, too, it says in 32, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. And he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to the inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I'll reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. Right Now the, the twist of the story is the Levite and the priest and the guys were supposed to see this opportunity to take advantage of it. And the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, the Samaritan is the enemy of the Jew. And so the actual thing would be the Samaritan about to be the one who shuns and walks by, so I'm not going to do it. But what's he do? He sees the opportunity and he takes it. And he goes farther. He risks all of this. He risks his own money on this one. He risks his reputation among his friends on this one. And, 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 he, and he goes to it. And at the end, Jesus says in 36, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? And the expert, okay, the expert replied, the one who had mercy on him. And then Jesus says, go and do likewise. See, <laughs> here it is, right? Go and be like this good Samaritan. What did this good Samaritan do? He took a risk on the opportunity that could have cost him and did cost him, but he took the risk. And what's Jesus say? This is how you ought to act. This is it. He expects it. He rewards it. And it makes him happy. Okay, so, so that's just one. Now, now look, look right after this, okay? Right after this, at the home of Mary and Martha. And remember, they were his friends. And as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care? that my sister had left me to do the work by myself, tell her to help me, okay? So, so easy setup. Jesus and his crew are coming in. The, 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 the Martha is just busy doing all the preparations and getting all the food ready, which is a good thing, right? It's a good thing. It's not bad. In fact, they need to eat and stuff needs to be ready and the house, the house should be ready and the house should be clean, right? So, so it's a good thing. But Martha's sister, Mary, instead of helping in the kitchen, sits out on the floor of the living room, listening to the teaching of Jesus, just wanting to be around. And Martha says, Jesus, come on, can't you tell her to, 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 to come and help me do this? And in 41, Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and will not be taken away from her. Mary said, there's one thing that's more important than anything else, and that's for me to listen and be with Jesus. She risked the relationship with her sister. She risked the ire of her sister, right? She, she risked the, the, the talk that could be about her. Why isn't she in here doing this? Why isn't she in here helping us? But, but what did Jesus do? He, he expects us to take that risk of what's the best thing to do, what's the most important thing. He rewards Mary by, with, his, with his words. And what's it do? It makes him happy. You could just see him looking over at Mary and just go, but she's chosen the best thing. The best thing.
<laughs> okay, one, one more quick one. We'll, 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 we'll end with this, okay? So you get to chapter 11, right? This is all in a row. Then this is the kind of the mini teaching on the, on the how, to, how do we pray, right? The Lord's Prayer. <laughs> and then this next story, right? There's another story, okay? And then it says this in verse 5 of chapter 11. It says, so suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. So just a little bit of context here. Um, <laughs> So hospitality in the Middle East in the time of Jesus, that was just a huge thing. And it would have been shameful and embarrassing. And they would have been a, one of the worst things you could do was not offer hospitality to friends who roll in, okay? Not offer hospitality. So this guy doesn't have any bread. So he rolls over to his friends and says, give me three. And he says this in verse 7. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are already in bed. I can't get up and give you anything, okay? So no, here, here it is, right? Here's the setup. What's, what's Jesus expect? What's Jesus going to reward? And what's going to make Jesus happy, right? What is it? Okay, you listening? Here it is. I have a need and I'm going to come to this, my friend, and I'm going to get a need. And then the picture is come to God with prayer, right? That's, that's the idea behind it. I'm going to risk I'm going to risk bothering them. I'm going to risk the, <laughs> the comfort of my family because we, we all live in one room, you know, and we got to step over and if you knock and I go get bread out and everything's going to wake up. We probably had livestock in the house with us and they're going to wake up. It's just going to be a mess. I'm not going to help you. <laughs> Listen to this. In verse 8, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So what's the reward? Jesus says, this is what I expect. That you take the risk. For the kingdom stuff. Jesus says, I'm going to reward that every single time. And then Jesus says, this is what makes me happy. <laughs> My friends, listen, um, we're going to spend the, 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 these five weeks, the next four, and we're going to ask this question, is it worth the risk? And we're going to ask this question of the three big kingdom currencies that we have, people and our property and our platform. And we're going to ask, does Jesus expect it? Does Jesus reward it? And does it make him happy? And if you want to live a life with Jesus, that's a kingdom adventure. This is the road we take. Thanks for that message, Pastor John. And it is truly worth the risk to say yes to what God is calling you to. Uh, so I encourage you to join us back in the next weeks where we're going to get really practical looking at different areas of our lives and how we can leverage them for the kingdom. Uh, but uh, if you need prayer or someone to talk to you right now, we have people ready in this moment. So send us a message if you're on social media and you can hit the live prayer button if you're on church online. And we would love to connect with you. And kids, uh, you're up next. Uh, children's programming will start in just one minute. Uh, so don't miss that. And everyone else, it was so good to be with you here today. Uh, we'll see you back next week.
just watching an episode of The Metal Mania. One second, it's almost over. No, Metal Mania, don't go through that door. Oh, that's it, it's over? What will happen to The Metal Mania? Will he live to fight another day? Find out now on the next episode of The Metal Mania. Uh, oh, watch it now, yes! I mean, I can't watch it right now because I have to, I mean, I get to talk to you about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should, even when you don't want to. Sorry, I'm just, I, uh, I love that show. <laughs> but I just, I feel like every episode is a cliffhanger that just makes you want to watch another one and another one. You know how cliffhangers are. Or maybe you call them nail biters. 
But um, you can't you can't uh, you can't watch TV all the time because uh, um, you get uh, you gotta like self you gotta find self control in in your life. Watch out, Melvinian! Sorry, that was just really a that was just a really cool part. Uh, okay, I'm good now. No more binge watching. No more distractions. I am here for you. You have my complete and utter attention. I have to know. And no, but I must, but I can't. <sighs> Boy, this is gonna be harder than I thought. No. In today's story, we'll learn about what happens when you have too much of a good thing. Will Jacob be able to resist the metal medallion? Will he learn a lesson about self-control? Find out in the next few minutes. I sure hope so. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 16. Adeline and her younger brother Zeke had been waiting weeks for this particular Saturday. It's here! Yes day! Every year, their parents declared a yes day, where they would say yes to anything Adeline and Zeke wanted to do, with a few rules. We're not spending more than $15 each on anything other than meals. And we're not doing anything that could hurt you or anyone else. Can we have donuts for breakfast? Yes. A and ice cream? Yes. With whipped cream and gummy bears? Yep. Yes! Fueled by this sugar rush, Zeke and Adeline had energy to burn. Can we have a family water battle? Oh, kids against parents. Absolutely. The kids' super soakers were beating their parents' water balloons until Dad busted out the water hose. Hey, you can't use the house. Yes, do everything. OK, fine. Pizza from Pizzano's for lunch. And monster cookies. Can I make them all by myself, please, please, please? Yes and yes. Dad and Adeline rode scooters to the store to get cookie ingredients. Yes! While Mom and Zeke took bikes to get pizza. Oh, uh, yeah! Pretty sure that me riding a scooter half a mile is gonna hurt someone. Probably me. It's sidewalk the whole way, Dad. Back at home, Adeline concocted the monster cookies with all the add-ins. Chocolate chips, M&M's, peanut butter, toffee bits, candy corn, crushed pretzels. Are you sure that's gonna taste okay? Yes. When the giant cookies were out of the oven and cooled, everyone had to agree. Mmm, these are actually amazing. Zeke and Mom could only give thumbs up as they chewed. After lunch, Dad and Zeke said yes to an epic battle of Ultra Luigi together. Well, Mom said yes to a nap. Adeline planned to say yes to a new episode of Super Chef Junior, but as she was leaving the kitchen, she paused and looked back at the plate of monster cookies. They did turn out awesome. It almost seemed as if those gooey cookies were calling her name. Adeline! Adeline! Well, it is yes day. Adeline grabbed another cookie for now, and one for while she watched Super Chef Junior. When Adeline finished her episode and the cookies, she passed through the kitchen to find Zeke and Dad. Adeline! Yes? The cookies seemed to smile at her with candy-coated faces. Well, yes, just one more. In the rec room, Dad and Zeke were still battling it out. Hey, sis, you want to play? Adeline wanted to say yes, but her stomach felt a little queasy, and the flashing screen made her head spin. Uh, I'll just sit this one out. Don't suppose you could bring us a couple of those incredible cookies? Um, sure. In the kitchen, Adeline put two giant cookies on a paper plate. Adeline. 
okay, fine. Even though her stomach didn't feel great, Adeline just couldn't resist that wonderful, chewy, cookie bite and candy crunch. She finished off yet another cookie on her way down to the rec room. Here you go. Thanks, sweetie. Hey, are you okay? Adeline grabbed her stomach as it churned. Her mouth felt sour. Yes. Um, no. Adeline sat down quickly on the sofa, but the storm in her stomach grew. She bolted off of the sofa and headed straight for the bathroom. It didn't take long for all those cookies, not to mention pizza, ice cream, and donuts to come right back up. Dad rushed in to help. Oh, sweetie, I, I know we've said yes to a lot of sugar today, but just how many cookies did you eat? Um, I'm not sure too many. Whoa, that is seriously disgusting. Mom was right behind Z. Adeline? I'm feeling better now, Mom. Honest, just too many cookies. Once they were back in the rec room, Dad shook his head. You're a walking proverb. You mean proverbs in the Bible? Sure. There's this great one that says, if you find honey, eat just enough. If you eat too much of it, you will throw up. Ugh, true story. Yeah, did you put honey in the cookies? No, it doesn't have to be honey. It can be anything. I was going to ask what everyone wants for dinner, but... Toast, applesauce. Affirmative. I guess sometimes you gotta say no, even on yes day. Adeline's yes day hadn't gone quite the way she imagined, but at least she discovered a new skill to work on, knowing when to stop. Sometimes when it comes to self-control, you need a little help. That should do it. King Solomon wrote, if you find honey, eat just enough. If you eat too much of it, you will throw up. You notice that Solomon didn't write that there was anything wrong with eating honey, but you can have too much of a good thing. You have to know when stop. This isn't just true with honey either. For some people, they can't stop playing video games. Jump, dive, collect extra health. Some people can't stop eating sweets. For some people, it can even be sports. Okay, I got soccer at nine. I got hockey at 10. Boxing after that, right before lunch, I'm gonna get some football in. After lunch, I'm gonna get some baseball in. Cornhole, pickleball, jujitsu. Now, none of those things are bad things by themselves, but if you don't know when to stop, even good things can get out of hand. If you find yourself thinking about that something all the time, it could be a clue that you need to stop. If you find yourself sneaking behind somebody's back so you can just watch one more video or eat just one more cookie, you might need to stop. If you're not sure what that something is for you, ask someone you can trust to help you see it and maybe even help you stop. The one thing to remember today is this, know when to stop. This is a tough one, but remember, Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you some help when you choose to follow Jesus. You don't have to experience these nail biters on your own. I'm still looking forward to watching more of my show. But I think I'll wait until tomorrow at the very least. And if you need any help knowing when to stop, take it from me. You're gonna need a lot of duct tape. I'll see you next time.